There is nobody yeah. in the world that knows more about tropical <laughs> forests than Dr. <laughs> Ariel Lugo, and I do want to mention that he did get a presidential award just yesterday for his work with tropical forests. You know, Ariel, I thought tropical forests only occurred, or rainforests occurred only in the tropics. I'm assuming that a lot of people feel the same way. They can occur anywhere in the world, Alaska? That's right, they can occur in Alaska. Anywhere where you get sufficient rainfall, you can get uh, rainforest. But there's a lot of rain in a lot of different places, and I don't hear of rainforests in other places. Of course, it's not as simple as the amount of rain. You have to have, the rainfall has to be four times the evaporation. So that uh, if you evaporate a lot of water like Puerto Rico, it takes more rainfall in Puerto Rico to get a rainforest than it does in Alaska. So in theory then, you don't need that much rain, you just need it to be four times the evaporation. But who measures evaporation and how do they do that? <laughs> Well, meteorologists, scientists are always measuring everything, as oh, you know, sure <laughs> and so we have statistics on everything. So uh, if you get at least four times uh, evaporation, and then you have rain, uh, rainforest. Well, how much rain do we get here? Because I'm assuming we get more rain than Alaska. That's right. Well, our rainforest here gets up to 200 inches of rain, which is a lot of water. Well, put it in perspective, because okay, I, I don't know what 200 inches is. <laughs> I know, because I'm a meteorologist, but maybe a lot of people don't. Well, you go to your backyard, to your swim pool, and you stack all the water and it'll be 16 feet deep. Oh my God, so that is a lot of water. But big difference then between Alaska and Puerto Rico has to be the temperature. Absolutely, and then that has a big implications for the types of rainforest that you have. In Alaska, it's very cold, it freezes. Uh, in Puerto Rico, always warm. Right, so the species have to hide part of the year, and I'm assuming we have more species then, more plants, more animals? Well, our, our temperature here is, is nicer, so you have more species, more biodiversity than you have in Alaska. Also, Alaska has forest fires. We have a few forest fires, but not as big as they do there, but we do have hurricanes and they don't get hurricanes up there. A big difference between Alaska and Puerto Rico is the disturbance. Uh, our hurricanes have big implications for the forest and thank God we don't have forest fires in our rainforest. All right, and the trees are smaller as well, aren't they? That's right, they're pruned by the wind so they're shorter. But they're stronger. And the, Absolutely. And the leaves help and to very diverse. protect you from the rain. Now this is an exotic leaf from an exotic That's tree. Right. And this is a native leaf. And if you'll notice, this one really protects you from the rain. This one, not so Ay, good. Bendito. Not too much. <laughs> Why don't we take a tour then of the forest? Yes, let's go and roll the tape and see what the rainforest looks like. And today we're going to go into the forest and go up a tower and see how the structure of the forest changes with elevation, okay? Let's go. This is an experimental area and, and here we're studying uh, the rainfall as it falls through the canopy. It falls into these containers and we can analyze the chemistry of the rainforest water. When it rains very hard in the rainforest, the water comes over the stems and into the ground. And that's why these trees, they have sometimes many plants growing on them. Well, another characteristic of the rainforest is that the dominant trees, they grow very straight, as you can see here in front of us. So what do you say if we go to the top of the forest, climb up there and see how it looks from up there? Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're halfway up the forest. Soon we'll be in the top. But I thought it would be nice to collect some leaves from this tree that we have next to us. So why don't you collect some leaves and let's keep them so that when we get to the top, we can compare with the leaves on the top of the forest. So go ahead and collect one for each of your friends. Okay, take another one and uh, let's crush the, that leaf. You don't crush them. You crush it and see what kind of smell do you, do you, you know, just crush it. <laughs> oh, yes. You see many rainforest trees, they have special <laughs> chemistry <laughs> and that's how they fight the insects. And you don't see too many holes in these leaves, it's because those leaves are very difficult to eat. They don't taste very good. So let's go to the top to see how the leaves are on top of the forest. Okay, okay. okay here we're almost at the top of the forest and it's raining because this is a rainforest. So now let's collect some leaves from the top of the tree. We're, go we're coming in the same tree. So why don't you collect some leaves and share with your friends uh, up here. If you compare them now, you see there's a tremendous difference. Now, why would the leaves be so small up here and so large in the bottom of the forest? 
Anybody has an idea? Well, because of the wind. The wind, yes, there's more wind up here. There's more light. There's so the leaves doesn't leave as much uh, sunlight. The ones in the bottom, they're growing in the shade. So they have to be large to collect the sunlight because after all, leaves collect sunlight to do photosynthesis, to make food that we eat sometimes. So you see the same tree has an enormous change in leaf size from the bottom to the top. And that is a characteristic of rainforests. And that's the leaves, they sort of curl so they don't get overheated by the high sunlight up here. Of course, we don't have much sunlight today because it's raining, but when it's clear, it's very hot. And so the leaves, the size of the leaves um, helps them um, maintain their temperature. And when you're on top of the forest, if you're a small leaf, you can maintain the temperature better than if you are a large leaf. Okay, here we're in the top of the mountain and uh, we're in a cloud forest. As you can see, it's very cloudy here. And here we have a, a station to measure the climate of the area. You can see the little weather vane where we measure the direction of the wind. Uh, we measure the speed of the wind. You see over there some containers where we collect rainwater. And then you see these flat things with strings attached. That's the equipment that we use to measure um, clouds. And we can separate cloud water from rainwater. The rainwater will fall on the funnel, and then we collect it down. But the cloud will go through those little strings, and there we collect the cloud water. Now, why do we do that? The reason we do that is because in these cloud forests, the clouds are very important for plants. So what do you say if we go and see the plants and see how they intercept the clouds? Well, here, uh, the trees are very short here, but we're still in the rainforest. And uh, why don't you touch those leaves? How, how do you feel those leaves? They're hard. They're very hard. That's because at the top of the mountain, there's a lot of wind, and the leaves have to be very hard to, you know, to sustain the, the force of the wind. But how about putting your hand on this, and how do you feel that? <laughs> it's very wet. You see, it's dripping water. And all this water comes from the clouds. So these plants here, they're called epiphytes. And they're very common in the rainforest. And these plants intercept the rain in the, the water in the clouds, and that's how they live. So they don't need the soil. They, they get their nutrients from the clouds. So the cloud forest, many plants in the cloud forest um, derive the nutrients from the rainforest. And what do we have here? Here we have, um, this is, what do you see inside? Water. Lots of water. And so this is uh, a bromeliad, and they're very common in the rainforest, and they, they store water. And inside of that water, you get animals, you get microbes, you get little microcosms. So there's a lot of life, and all this water comes also from the cloud forest. We see here, in the cloud forest, every surface is covered by plants. And here we're sitting on the forest floor, and we have this beautiful moss, and this is called sphagnum moss. And the sphagnum moss, sometimes you can find it in the forests of the United States, in the temperate forest or in the boreal forest. But here you have sphagnum moss in the tropics. And this plant also intercepts water from the cloud, and it leaves off the nutrients that it derives from the clouds. Okay, here we are standing next to a huge rainforest tree you know, this is one of the primary species of the rainforest in Puerto Rico, the Ausubo. I wonder, anybody knows how old this tree is? Any guess? Well, actually, we don't know. The age of the tropical trees are very difficult to estimate because they don't have growth rings like they do in, uh, let's say, in Alaska, in the, in the United States. So we have to guess at the age by the size of the tree and, more, and how fast it grows. And I would say that a tree like this is probably about 500 to 600 years old. And what that means is that the trees in the Caribbean, they're young because the hurricanes kill them, you know, it knocks them over. And so the trees are usually small, not as big as you get in the Western United States where they can grow for a thousand years. Uh, here, it's very hard to find a tree that old. But look, but this tree, it shows our age. You see all the plants that are growing on them, all the epiphytes, all the structure that the tree has. And if we look here, we see how the tree resolves one of the problems of living in the rainforest, which is how do you get enough oxygen to the roots so that the tree can survive in great heights. And you see these little points here? 
Those things are called lenticels, and that's how the tree gets oxygen to the roots. Okay, well, what makes the rainforest is lots of water. So here we have an example of the exuberance of the rainforest with the excess of water. Well, thanks, Dr. Lugo, for that introduction to the tropical rainforest.